if 15th gen comes out and they send tech tubers the cam 2 modules that just work at 8000 okay so now what are they going to show when their benchmarks when they show 14th gen versus 15th gen they're going to show 14th gen with like 6400 and then they're going to show 15th gen with 8000 it just works cam 2 xmp now you have this insanely skewed graph showing 15th gen being way faster than 14th gen and it's gonna be a whole misinformation cycle all over again so the idea behind cam 2 is basically they're removing through hole solders from the board and moving it closer to the CPU socket. So the idea is here's your motherboard horizontal view like this. And then here are your RAM slots Too dim, right? These RAM slots have a bunch of pins sticking out the bottom end like this with through hole solders on them, right? Now, the idea is that these through hole solders cause a lot of signal integrity problems. I don't know the mechanism behind why other than they're just like antennas collecting fucking noise, right? Um, now the idea is with the cam two and then, and then also here's a horizontal view of, um, or a vertical view of the motherboard. Oops. Here are the dim slots. Here's the CPU slot. The traces have to be equal length. So what what yet what you end up having is the one that's closer to the CPU socket will have like weird zigzags like this. And if you look at your motherboard, you can see them. It's pretty cool. Weird zigzags like this to make this one artificially longer so that this one, when it reaches it, both signals hit at the same time, right? Now, the idea behind Cam 2, CPU socket, Cam 2 module, is this just like two lines straight to the fucking CPU socket with no zigzags, no worrying about any of that fucking nonsense, right? So theoretically, it should be much better for a very high memory frequencies. Should be. Um, that's why they're advertising like 8400 and shit now with Cam 2, right? We can do 8400. I just did 8400 on the on the fucking um, the lightning board, right? So it's it's not like we can't do it now. It's just this should be easier with XMP without with much less FAFO and micro adjusting your system agent and Q voltage by the micro volt and all that shit, right? Now, here's the major elephant in the room with this entire thing. Just the like literally what's the goal we always go back to this don't we but it's just like what's the fucking goal um there is none there's none and and for there isn't hang on let me rephrase there is none for gaming Easier to cool? No, I would say it's harder to cool. We'll find out because you got a lot more density on one chip now. You can't spread the heat load, right? And and you also, how are you going to put a fan on this, right? You would need a fan on the back of the motherboard and the front. Not, you can't, you can't put a fan going up and down now. So now all of a sudden top intake isn't going to cool your arm, right? So, yeah, that's another con as well. Maybe cooling it might be fucking horrendous, right? Um, it can soak into the motherboard, but that's not a good thing either, right? It's going to heat up your chipset and your CPU socket as well. That's not good. We'll see what kind of cooling designs they have, right? But um, water cooling it will be more difficult. Now, or except if they have like a Z790 Aqua, mono block covering the whole board and the cam too that'd be fucking sick yeah 
because then your your whole mono block would cover the entire and the ram that would make it really simple right but uh, i'm assuming the very first iterations of this it's going to be kind of a clusterfuck and you're going to be better off just water cooling regular dims right and if we have so many we have so many water blocks for dims now and it's so cheap that it's like it's so cheap it's going to be hard to adopt this right but here's the thing we're going back to the, what's the goal again if you can hit 8000 with a die zero fps increase after that that's it so like so like so do you remember how like 4400 was the sweet spot for the 10 900k so if you hit 4400 if you did 46 or 4800 there was no more fps increase or if you hit like um what was it 35 nanoseconds on a 10 900k those those idiots that went like 32 33 no fps increase right um if you hit 53 nanoseconds on a 14900k if you go below that no fps increase anymore there's always a threshold there's always a bell curve of when you pass something it's not even just diminishing returns it's like it just stops there's no more fps increase beyond that right or if it is it's it, unmeasurable like one fps for every 200 megahertz now right so for gaming there's no advantage whatsoever at least on 14th gen right that might be different for 15th gen now here's the other here's the other fucking problem with that 15th gen here's my okay this this is more of a prediction this is this might not be factual at all this is my prediction 15th gen isn't going to clock as high as 14. that's probably a fact right so it's not going to need faster ram unless they really like cut the cache in half or some shit like that but it still has 16 e cores so the cache should be the same i'm assuming right between 14 and 15. so now you have 14th gen 15th gen same cache 15th gen has higher ipc lower clock speed basically i'm gonna go ahead and assume that the memory subsystem requirements of both generations is gonna be the exact same so with that information in mind 8000 is all you need again for gaming so then who fucking cares about cam 2 now that might change for 16th gen 17th gen 18th gen maybe not though here's why what does 3d cache teach us from the amd side of things memory doesn't matter 6000 is good enough so what if 16th gen 17th gen has even more cash than 14th gen or 15th gen now you need even less memory frequency less memory speed less memory timings the more cash that they add each generation the less this shit matters so cam 2 as a technology is interesting it's cool it's like it's, it almost feels like too little too late it doesn't matter no one nobody gives a shit because we're gonna get more cash as we go along not less so what's the fucking goal here's what the actual goal is of that the goal of that is world records slash xoc that's that's a whole separate goal that we don't cover on this channel our goal 
is gaming competes FPS. That's our goal. Or, or also, um, gameplay experience FPS. Like smooth, single player VR, no dips. It just works experience. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I'll still, I'm gonna obviously test it because I, I, I'm, I'm talking out of my ass. You can't just say it's not gonna make a difference without testing it. This is all a prediction of mine. Um, but it, 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 I would say if you already have like 8,000 sticks or if you have DDR5 that already does 8,000, just hang on to those and just wait for me to test it because you're probably going to be fine. And even then, 15th gen might be slower anyway. So you're going to be waiting. Uh, you're going to be waiting until 2026 anyway for fucking 16th or 17th gen. So by the, by the time this matters for you, fucking DDR6 might be out. Who fucking knows, right? So it's, uh, I, I don't know. Or the other, the only other thing that I can think of of why they're doing this, honestly, is, is and it seems to be Intel specific, which is very key, is because large tech tubers are dumb as fuck for XMP and voltage FAFO. I literally, it might just be that, as simple as that. So if, if because you have to assume that the large tech tubers are like normies, a normie is not gonna make 8,000 work. Even though it can, it's not gonna happen if you're a normie. You're not gonna, you're not gonna know what the fuck you're doing. What, that's why everybody pays me to do it, right? Now, if 15th gen comes out and they send tech tubers the cam 2 modules that just work at 8,000, okay, so now what are they gonna show when their benchmarks when they show 14th gen versus 15th gen. They're gonna show 14th gen with like 6,400, and then they're gonna show 15th gen with 8,000. It just works cam 2 XMP. Now you have this insanely skewed graph showing 15th gen being way faster than 14th gen. And it's gonna be a whole misinformation cycle all over again. Not misinformation for the normie, but misinformation for those of us that are hardware enthusiasts. It, that, that could be a reason why they're coming out with this. It's, it's almost like idiot removal. The 3D cache was the same thing. Idiot removal, right? So yeah, but that could just be, it could just be as simple as that anyway. But anyway, when this does come out, just hang on. Let me benchmark it. Let me find out. I'll do 8,000 versus 8,000. I'll do 8,000 versus maxing this thing out. Uh, it, it'll be a good video. And we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. We'll get to the bottom of it. But I, but yeah, if you already got good sticks, what's the goal? And then hey, here's the other fucking la last thing. Last thing. What's the game goal? So if you already have a 14900K and 8000, you are maxing every game right now. Anyway, you're you're maxing every monitor on the market. You're, you're already maxing everything out. So what's the goal? The goal is if you just want to be at the top on hardware bot or something. Something that has nothing to do with us. You know what I'm saying? No goal. There's from a gaming perspective, dude, you could go so far as to say there is no goal to new CPUs. Never mind Cam 2. We don't need a 15th gen. We don't need another Ryzen. We don't need we don't need better CPUs at all. We need better GPUs or we need better games. Or we need some like like the seat like the the fucking platform that the platforms that we have now are not the lowest hanging fruit. It's the game engines and the graphics cards right now are the lowest hanging fruits. Or you could also say texture loading, lowest hanging fruit. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. So this 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 whole thing. While it is cool that they announced it at Computex, 
absolutely no goal whatsoever to any of this. 